Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Christ Church UCC. No matter where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here, including those on Facebook. This morning, a uh, reminder from Mission Committee that the gifts for San Lucas' children, um, the list is on the tree, basically, and on the stand next to the tree. There are still a few tags left, so Mission Committee encourages you to pick one up or two if you haven't done so. Um, they ask that you also write your name next to the child's name on that uh, sheet next to the tree, and the gift should range from $20 to $25. Should be a toy, game, books, or gift cards. And there's more information about that in your bulletin if you have any questions. You can also ask uh, Donna or Rita Barr. Bill Ship is doing better, as uh, uh, some of you who use technology uh, received the email this week that he is in the hospital. He is doing better. They're looking to moving him into rehab next week or this week. So continue praying for him and for uh, the Ship family and Chelsea family. If you wish to send him a note, a card, or a letter, please do so to his mailing address and his family will make sure that he receives that. Blue Christmas service is Tuesday the 22nd? 21st? Okay, that's what I thought, but uh, at 6 p.m., sorry. Um, and that one, as I've mentioned before, that's a, it is a Christmas service, but it's slightly different from the traditional type of Christmas service. This is a time where you come, especially those who've had a hard time during the year, where you recognize those feelings, those emotions, and allow yourself to just open up and be in that space with others who share similar stories. Uh, you also reflect on those you have lost in the last year. If you're struggling with your mental health, anything like that, um, that is the time to come for that type of worship service. And if you're also curious and you want to see what it's like, you're welcome to come to it. It's not just for one type of person. It's for whoever wants to come to it. Then, of course, your Christmas Eve services on the 24th, which is Friday, next Friday, uh, 4 p.m. That one will be with communion. And I won't mention any names, but 11 p.m. won't have communion. So just FYI. <laughs> but uh, we will have Christmas carols with it because I know that's one of the things the search committee asked me about when I was called is, are we going to have Christmas carols? I'm like, if you want to have Christmas carols, then let's have Christmas carols. So 11 uh, p.m. we'll have the Christmas carols. I would also encourage you that if you are the type that drives uh, when it's nighttime and you know others who don't and they want to come to the service and you're coming to one of those services, I'd encourage you to reach out to them and see if they want to lift and uh, bring them along with whatever service time you're coming if they're willing to do that because we all know that not every single one of you uh, drives and on top of that, not every one of you drives when it's dark. So, as being part of the community and the family, I encourage you to reach out to each other, uh, especially those who you know will not be spending it with family that is more low key for them. I encourage you to invite them. Also for the Blue Christmas service, same thing. I also want us to keep in mind and in prayer all those who have been affected by the tornadoes because that was a tremendous amount of tornadoes that we had in very late season uh, in a short amount of time. I know that Happy's uh, daughter lives in Kentucky, and while she's okay, they don't have any utilities. But the neighborhood down the street obviously wasn't so lucky. And we know here in Illinois that people did die, especially at the Amazon uh, Work Center, Distribution Center, um, where it basically flattened the, the building. So. I encourage you to continue praying for all those folks who have uh, lost their livelihood in a sense, including those that are not worshiping in a church building this morning because it also got flattened. And just like you appreciate your building and coming together as a community, they're still coming together as a community, but they don't have that familiar, 
familiar space, that security that they feel and that you feel as well when you come into this building. So I encourage you to keep that in mind. Let's pray. Oh, and happy birthday and happy anniversary to those listed in the bullet that I always forget. So let's give them a round of applause. Now let us pray. Oh God of timeless love, we gather in this place to feel your gentle touch and your powerful peace. This week has been too full or too empty. We are here for what you alone can provide. Let our voices unite in song and praise. Let our senses come alive to the new birth you offer to each one of us. May the fruits of this time be a gift to you and to all that gather this day in this place. As we enter into silent prayer, let us uplift the people who have lived through the last week's tornadoes and for the families of those who have passed or are missing. In the name of Jesus, we now enter into silent prayer. Please join me in our call to worship. God is coming into the world. Praise God, who is doing miraculous and wondrous things. God is coming into the world. Praise God, who shapes us as the of the wind. God is coming into the world. Praise God, who delivers us from danger. God is coming into the world. Praise God, who tears open the sky and comes to us once more. Please turn to the Advent Litany in your bulletins. As we gather around the Advent wreath today, we rejoice that Christmas is a time of prayer and of open hearts when we sing songs of joy, Christmas is a time of worship the moment when the busy of us pause in wonder. Christmas happens when God comes to us in love through Jesus Christ and fills us with love for all humankind. The Lord is our strength, our song, and our salvation. And with joy we will see the salvation of the Lord. Shout aloud and sing for joy. For great is the God of Israel. Our scripture for this third Sunday of Advent is taken from the book of Zephaniah, the third chapter, verses 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away from your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. As on the day of festival, I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord.
As we light the candles of hope and peace, we also light the candle of love to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With the coming of this light, there is love. Such great love helps us to love God and one another. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you that Jesus showed your love for every person, babies, and children, old people and young, sick people and those who were strong, rich people and those who were poor. Come to us in this Advent season and give us love in our hearts for all people. Amen. Amen. Please hear God's assurance of grace. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. We shall see God's goodness. Wait for the Lord. 
In the name of the one to come, you are forgiven. Amen. I invite you to now stand in body and spirit, or spirit, and share a sign of peace by waving to each other. Our first reading is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Be glad in the Lord always. Again I say, be glad. Let your gentleness show in your treatment of all people. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all of your requests to God in your prayers and petitions along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Please stand in body or spirit for our gospel reading according to Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. Then John said to the crowds who came to be baptized by him, you children of snakes, who warned you to escape from the angry judgment that is coming soon? 
Produce fruit that shows you have changed your hearts and lives. And don't even think about saying to yourselves, Abraham is our father. I tell you that God is able to raise up Abraham's children from these stones. The ax is already at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be chopped down and tossed into the fire. The crowds asked him, what then should we do? He answered, whoever has two shirts must share with the one who has none, and whoever has food must do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. They said to him, teacher, what should we do? He replied, collect no more than you are authorized to collect. Soldiers asked, what about us? What should we do? He answered, don't cheat or harass anyone and be satisfied with your pay. The people were filled with expectation and everyone wondered whether John might be the Christ. John replied to them all, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than me is coming. I'm not worthy to loosen the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The shovel he uses to sift the wheat from the husk is in his hands. He will clean out his threshing area and bring the wheat into his barn, but he will burn the husks with a fire that can't be put out. With many other words, John appealed to them proclaiming good news to the people. Here ends our gospel lesson. Let us not place a period where God has placed a comma. God is still speaking. Are you ready for a Merry Christmas? For many folk, a merry Christmas seems far out of reach. We don't always acknowledge it, but many people are weighed down by our unhappiness at this time of year. Some are grieving the death of a loved one. Some are battling depression or addiction. Some are entangled in painful family dynamics. And some are weary with illness. Some are worried about looming problems on the global scene. Some haven't paid much attention to God in a long time and resent the reminders of God's presence around every decorated corner. Some feel like God couldn't care less. Indeed, a lot of folk aren't too joyful. And to be honest, can we blame them? Can we acknowledge the true difficulties in our lives with joy to the world? Some every time we turn on the radio. And that could apply to even some of you sitting here today. As you're trying to find a way to connect with the spirit of the season. And you're finding it very difficult. It's not because you don't believe. It's not because you don't have faith. It's because life has hit you with so many hurdles in the last year. And some of you maybe have lost a loved one, are healthy, can support yourselves. But the dynamics of living in a pandemic for the last two years, basically, has hit you. And so imagine when you mix all of that for some folks, it's extremely overwhelming. There's also folks who are in college and may not be able to go back home. And we also have to think of those who were affected by the tornadoes in the last few days. Maybe a lot of them were joyful and ready to celebrate Christmas. And while many of them are probably thankful to be alive, they're also mourning the loss. Many times we don't think of a loss as a material thing. 
And while there's a difference between being materialistic and mourning the loss of something significant, think about it. How many of you have lived in the same house for a few decades? What would happen if you lost that? Yes, we would be glad that you're safe and that you're alive. But what about all the memories you've created in your homes? And memories can be joyful, can be sorrowful, but you've created your life there. You all have breaks your daughters. Live with your spouses and now you're a widower or a widow. What does that mean? And to lose your home on top of that? What would that do to your spirit? Some feel like God has abandoned them and couldn't care less. And without going into details, I can assure you that there's probably one or two of you feeling exactly that within this church community. And other church communities, it's the same thing. And it's not that you don't love God. Imagine when you were growing up and you were in trouble. Oh, my mom doesn't love me or my dad doesn't love me. Because you felt it was going wrong, right? Although your parents were just kind of helping guiding you go the right way. I'm not saying that God puts these things. I don't believe in the phrase that God only gives you what you can handle. That is, from a theological point, then we're saying that God inflicts pain on us to see how much we can tolerate. And that's not the case. When we do have pain inflicted on us, God is still with us. When you cry, because I can imagine some of you have had those nights where you cried yourself to sleep. God was there next to you crying. And even if you didn't feel it, God was there hugging you and letting you know it's okay. I'm still here. See, today, well, I know we're not Catholic, but a lot of you have Catholic roots, just like myself, is the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which is another image of Mary will appear to an indigenous Mexican in the 1500s. And that's where the Basilica came of Our Lady of Guadalupe. See, I bring her up because oftentimes within being a Protestant, because you know, that's how Christianity kind of split, right? We often don't speak about Mary as much as we should. And the males in this room, you look around you, you're outnumbered. <laughs> Just saying. What does that mean? Most of you have appreciated your wife or your daughters or your mothers for what they brought into your life. So why is it that we don't often give that to Mary? Because we're celebrating the reason for the season, and we're like, yes, Jesus and the Nativity. But the rest of the year, we don't think of that young woman who said, okay, I'll have God's child. And let's face it, if historically that meant she was a teenager. And how many of you, as teenagers, would have said, sure, I'll take pregnant? I mean, stuff happens, right? And we're no one to judge. But, intentionally, how many of you would have been like, 
yeah, okay. Most of you were like, oh, no, no, that's scary. Or I'm not ready for that. Now, if you got pregnant as a teenager, no judgment here, just FYI. But how many of you would have done that? How many women, and again, no judgment, but how many women today have chosen not to have children for whatever reason? Think about that. Historically, a woman was expected to bear fruit. Even if she really said, she's like, God, I really don't want kids. It's like, there's plenty already. But it was her duty to have a child. Now we're a little more realistic. We acknowledge women have their own mind, and it is their body, so they do have the choice. See, Mary had that choice. And even when moments like this where, yes, we rely on God and we pray to Jesus, how many of you acknowledge that Mary as a mother, as a woman, can sense your pain. Have you ever thought about that? Now, throughout the years, people are like, oh, well, you worship Mary. Especially when I entered seminary, it's like, well, that's what Catholics do. No, we don't. So when I was a Catholic, I was raised to acknowledge Mary as part of the Holy Family. To acknowledge what she needs and Without her, we wouldn't be knowing Mary, the mother of Jesus. Maybe it was Helen, the mother of Jesus, or Rachel. But it was Mary who said, yes. So when we get into these emotions and we feel that God can care less, I often, when I fall into some of these, just like if I would have called my mom, Say, hey mom, what do you think of this? Or hey mom, I'm really struggling today. It wasn't that I was worshiping my mother. It was that I felt she could bring comfort and compassion. See, Mary is also that parental figure. That yes, we know it's God, the Son, God the Father or Mother or God the Parent and God the Holy Spirit. But we wouldn't have God the Son if Mary had said yes. So we can always say, hey, you saw your son crucified. You saw him be put through a whole bunch of things. You've grieved yourself. I'm just asking for some support. She can be there for you too. Now again, not elevating her to the level of God, but as someone who, is, who was human, who walked this earth, who bare God's child, who did see so many things, so many experiences that we have felt, she can understand that. Not saying that God doesn't. But you know, sometimes you're just mad at God. And you're like, I just don't want to talk to God right now. No, maybe Mary could be that friend. That you're like, I just don't get it. And to be honest, we can't blame folks who feel that God is not present in their lives. We can't. Because we don't know what it is to walk in their shoes. Just like they don't know what it is to walk in your shoes. I don't know what it is for you unless you open the door for me to get to know them. acknowledge the true difficulties in our own lives. How many of you are just kind of putting a blind on some of the stuff that you're experiencing and just saying, oh, I'm good. 
because you really don't want to see all of this over here. Think about it. Mary risked a lot to say yes to God. But it's also okay to have your doubts. Many of you were raised that you don't question God. Just leave it. Or as that expression is, well, God only gives you what you can handle. No. Life happens. Human nature happens. God is not there every morning of your life and saying, well, today, I think I'll make it difficult for Kyle. Or Donna, um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to put in here that she's going to mess up on an assignment for work. Just to give her a little stress. Let's see if she can handle that. Think about it. When we put it in those terms, do you really think God is doing that to you? No. But life happens. And it's okay. It's a time for us to just stand up, dust yourself off when you're ready. Those of you who have lost a loved one this year, I've told you that all I want is for you to continue in the grieving process. Not to get stuck, because then that is a concern. But I've also told you that if it takes you months to get past the grieving process, that's okay too. See, and just like your parents would forgive you when you would tell them something, uh, like, just leave me alone, or you slam the door. Laura, can your parents say that about you? <laughs> they forgave you. God doesn't have to forgive you because God created you. So God knows that what's really in your heart is that you still love God at the end of the day, and you're just having a bad moment. The prophet Zephaniah wrote to a people way down in the aftermath of the oppression of the Assyrian Empire. Their political and religious leaders had bowed to foreign leaders and foreign gods. The poor and the outcasts were ignored while people pursued worldly wealth. Corruption and violence ran rampant from the courthouse to the sanctuary. That still applies today. How many times have we not seen where we felt there was an injustice in our legal system. How many times have we not heard of a story that came out of a church that were like, how? Why is the church being used like that? Why is that lay member doing that? Why is that clergy person doing that? The people grew so weary of the moral stench and spiritual vacuum in which they lived that they have become indifferent to God. They didn't think God could make a difference in their lives, not in the grief, their poverty, their fear, or their shame. God calls at the night to speak a word from the Lord to these ancestors of our faith who have lost their truth and trust in God. Yet the first two and a half chapters of the book of Zephaniah hardly sound like words of comfort to a people of co co captivity. Zephaniah speaks harshly on behalf of the Lord, especially admonishing the leaders for their waywardness and their lack of trust in God. Again, that still applies today. How many of our political leaders or leaders in whatever think that they're God? It's my way. We elect them, yet they forget that. God is fiercely angry, Zephaniah warns. God will consume the earth in the fires of his passion. The great day of the Lord is coming. Instead of joy to the world, Zephaniah sings, wrath to the world, the Lord is coming. Now, you haven't heard me in the last months tell you such a thing, and I wouldn't, because I don't believe in a destructive God. I don't believe that God punishes us. 
I believe in a compassionate, loving God. God relents. Zephaniah sees his words of warning and destruction and gives birth to new hope with words of comfort. May God remember that we humans cannot restore ourselves on our own. Perhaps God's paternal heart breaks at the thought of continuing to punish these precious children. Do you think that God will the tornadoes? No. God didn't sit there and say, ooh. No. Regardless, if I stop telling the people what they've done wrong and starts telling what God is doing right, rejoice! Zephaniah says, look what God is going to do for you. Your judgment has been taken away. God is with you. You don't have to be afraid anymore. God is victorious over all of your enemies. And don't think of enemies as just people. Think of enemies as the hurdles of life. And God will sing a song of rejoicing over you. Then another change, the text shifts from Zephaniah speaking for God to God speaking for God's own self. Zephaniah has told us there would be a song and God began singing it. I will save you. I won't sing it because you don't want me to sing it. God sings to the people. I will help the lame and the outcast and I will lift up those who are ashamed. I will bring you home and give you everything you need. The voice of God lifts up the printed page and becomes a resounding love song for all to hear. It turns out that God yearns for joy too and is willing to step in and do for us what we cannot do for ourselves so that we can live in joy. A few years ago, a pastor was visiting a member of their congregation at a veterans hospital. They were waiting with him in a patient holding area where many others were waiting for various tests and procedures. Their visit was interrupted by a sound of a man groaning loudly and the softer sound of a woman humming. As the noise continued, the pastor excused themselves from the visit and followed the sound of the groaning and the singing. They turned to the corner to see a baldly scared man lying on a gurney, groaning and speaking nonsensical, non gibberish, <laughs> just like I just did. Besides him sat a woman stroking his brow and his brow and humming gently to him. The pastor introduced themselves and asked if they could sit with them for a few moments. The woman seemed glad for the company. She told the pastor their story. He had been wounded in Vietnam, resulting in severe mental and physical handicaps. He's been like this ever since. The pastor's mind raised to do the math for 30 years. This man had suffered like this. The pastor was speechless. Finally, the pastor asked, perhaps selfishly, if you don't mind me asking, have you endured? She smiled and said, I know that one day God is going to come and heal him, and I intend to be here when he does. And she began humming again, not sure the pastor thought in the sound of her humming song, the heard of the song of God singing too. She was humming the tune that fits a promise we find here in Zephaniah. It was just the beginning, but it was a hint of the loud love song to come. It was the first bars of the ballad, a boisterous victory over sin and disease and oppression and all that keeps us from joy. It was a lullaby of a mother comforting her child. It was a gracious tune of a warrior when he has won the battle. Perhaps then, joy to the world is not the song for those who cannot find much joy this time of year. Perhaps it came upon the midnight clear is a more genuine expression of our faith. This Advent, you who are beneath life's crushing load, rest beside the weary road and hear not just the angels singing, but our great God Almighty singing over you. Amen.
please join me in the new creed. We believe in God, who has created and is created, who has come in the true man, Jesus, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by his spirit. We trust him. He calls us to be his church, to celebrate his presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In the life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of peace, cause us to rejoice in you always. Make us gentle to everyone. Keep us from being anxious about anything, including our loved ones being ill, being isolated, being hungry, and especially for those families who have been affected by the tornadoes. Help us to ask you for what we need with thanksgiving, and let your peace guard our hearts and minds. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, merciful God, hear us as we pray to you, as your child taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Remember that we're not passing the collection plate, but it's in the narthex. Giver of all good things, as we offer these gifts to you, stretch our capacity to give of ourselves, our love, our companionship, and our material resources, wherever they are needed, as we recall those who are less fortunate. Amen. And thank you to Elaine, Bud, and Holly, Anybody else that I missed for putting the poinsettias up yesterday? Um, thank you for that. Um, also, next Sunday, Living Hope will be here at the same time as we are. 
obviously not in the sanctuary. They'll be using Lobby Hall and downstairs. So just FYI that if we finish a few minutes before 1030, they'll be in Lobby Hall till 1030. They're gonna have a really short uh, service. So I just wanna give you a heads up. Fellowship will still go on as usual for us. Just if we finish like today, a few minutes, I don't have my watch on it, I'm used to it. <laughs> I was like, uh, if we finish like today, a few minutes before 1030, just, you know, be uh, aware that we might have to wait a couple of minutes or so. But they know that we're pretty good with our schedule. As we go forward, let us prepare for his coming by being generous, honest, and kindly people that to the world may be a better place and that others may come to know you in the name of the Parent and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.